get installed by our governor as the president of the Worcester Rotary Club was an enormous you know, pride for me and a great honor. Uh, and uh, I had never thought that 37 years back when I landed in this country with six bucks in my pocket that I would be an entrepreneur, I would be able to lead a club, such a prestigious club, historic club like the Worcester Rotary Club and uh, make a little difference. <clears throat> so the question I'm sure that all of you are eagerly waiting for is how did he do this? You know, he has, you have overheard something that we have 50 new members, some say we have 20, Tom just said that there are 25 new members. <clears throat> to tell you the truth, as of this moment, we have 28 new applications that we see. So, I, when I became the president, you know, I have been in the club for six years, and uh, in the last six years, I have never been that much of a Rotarian that I have been in the last two months. Once I received that leadership opportunity, it really got to me that you got to, if you want to lead a club, you got to know about this club. And I had missed also because of some family mishap back home in India, the, the training sessions, as you know, I couldn't come. So I really didn't have much idea. So I started reading a lot about Rotary going to the websites and reading all newsletters and the Rotarian and magazines and really made me a true Rotarian, I would say. I mean, I'm yet to be mature, to be real Rotarian, but it made me a much better Rotarian than what I was probably in the club for the last six years. And now that I have this responsibility, I started thinking, that what can I really do for this club? The end of my term next year, would I be able to give an answer to myself that if somebody asked me, have you really lived up to the expectation that people had for you? I got to have an answer for that. So I started working on that. And our club being 102 years almost old, this is going to be our 102nd year next year. And then we have many members who have been there for over 50 years. When I was given the charge, we had 52 members in our club. Most of them are I would say, you know, retired, they've been loyal, they've been there for a long time, and I respect them as my real source of advisors. They're true Rotarians. I mean, they come every Thursday, whether they can walk or not, but they are there. But you know, it is a great inspiration to see them coming, and that inspires you. So I thought that, but if I want to do a project, in all practicality, it was not really possible to have them go and do things that I wanted the club to do. So a natural instinct came in my mind that I got to have some members here who can roll up their sleeves and go and do some work. And that motivated me to go and start getting some new members. And on my day of installation, I took a bold step and I said that I will see that this club has 50 new members by the time I finish my term. If I don't motivate myself by putting that high expectation from me, I would just be like another year. If you get a member, fine. If you don't get, we're trying. But I wanted to live, you know, set that expectation for myself. And with that, I started working. So what have I really done in these two months, really? July 11th was my first day of starting because 4th of July was holiday, so we didn't have any meeting. July 11th was the first day, and then started working on it. And as you know, even prior to that, I started working on many people, and I had 10 people who had committed to me to be the member on the day of installation. And uh, I know that there was a current of energy with that presentation. There was a huge excitement in the club. Next meeting we had, everybody gave their happy dollar for that installation. I could see the real inspiration that every member had with the installation that we did the way we did it. So first thing I would say, in order for us to be successful 
as a president, and those who are presidents here, I know that you all know, I think we have a great responsibility. We have a responsibility to energize our members, no matter how many are there. We have to make sure that every week we go and we motivate them. We make it entertaining, we make it whatever it takes to bring them together and let them know the value of what we're in. Because it is the value of Rotary. That's what we sell. That's what we let everybody know. That's what we educate. So as a president, I think it's a very important role we play to make sure that apart from other things that were important, we have this responsibility to do, we motivate each member of our club. We do something. So every week when I would go, I would take this with me. And I would go and declare, I have only 41 weeks left to do. 10 weeks have already gone by. We have a lot to do. 41 weeks are not much. Not much. I said this slogan, I turn it around every time I have something different. I would say, let's have a slogan, a member per member. A member per member. If I have 50 of them already there, I challenge each one of them that there should be one person there with you who thinks like you, who has the same kind of passion that you have. At least one person. Go and talk to them. And let them know what the road is all about. It is your responsibility. I would tell them repeatedly that being a member is not just you come here every week, listen to a speaker, we have a good lunch, socialize, network, and go and come back next week. No, we have a responsibility as a member to see that you do something for this club, which makes this club be in a better position than what it was last year. And so that our next president has a better opportunities as well. So I challenge each member that find out who you can meet, who thinks alive, and talk to them. What you have to talk to them is what Rotary is all about. And I say this to everyone. We're all entrepreneurs, business owners, many of those are in our club, and we have been very successful. We know we don't come to this club to really get more clients in my business. That's not my goal. My goal is that I have been a successful entrepreneur and I've got to share part of this success to my community, with my community. So I can give back something. That's my primary goal. That's what the Rotary is all about. Service above self. We do meet people, we do make network, but our goal is not to improve my own business. My goal is to see that how my business can be used to help the community. So I say this, when I was starting my own business, I came up with this thought that you have to be what we call a VIP. If you are a very important person, everybody would like to be around you. You are a very important person, everybody would like to be around you. But my VIP stands for something different. You got to have a value. V stands for value. You got to create an image and you've got to have a product. If you have that value, image, and product, you become a VIP and everybody would like to associate with you. I wanted my club to be a VIP club. A club which has got value. A club whose image must be built. And we have a great product. You talk about Rotary. First thing that comes to our mind that we have eradicated bullying almost everywhere in the world. Think about our club members have gone and done so much work in the third world countries like Haiti. We have dug wells, we have done the clean water system. We have promoted peace all over, we have given education, literacy. Those are our product. Value is already there. I mean, Rotary is known to be about leadership. It's known to be about ethics. It's known to be about fellowship. It's known to be about service. All these are our value. And those values are there in the club, no matter how the club is doing. Our club, the Rotary Club of Worcester, is 100, and 100 plus years old. And there was time when we had 350 members. When I took over, right now, we had 50 members at that point. 
And today we are close to 80 members. So what I do, I go and meet with people that I think could be a rotator. Every morning I wake up and I think, who that could be? My friend, anyone that I know I came across, if I found that this guy has a heart to give back, has an element in him that he could be a Rotarian, I would pursue it. My father always taught me that if you want to go across the river, you have to swim. If you want to climb on the top of the mountain, if you want to go on the top of the mountain, the peak of it, you have to climb. The peak is not going to come down to you. The other side of the river is not going to come down to you. You have to go to the other side by swimming or by climbing to reach the peak. I took that as my philosophy to reach the members. I went to each member that I thought could be a possibility. I did spend a good amount of time talking to them about what Rotary is all about. And I wanted to let them know that, you know what Rotary is? It's just like getting into Harvard. <clears throat> you get out of Harvard, everybody thinks you are smart. Right? He's a brilliant kid. He was in Harvard. He's a Harvard grad. You, known as, if you are identified as a Rotarian, people think this guy has a big heart. People look at you as a source of hope. People look at you as a source of new life, better life, as a source of strength. That's what the Rotarians are. And I think I see something in you that you could fulfill your passion by joining this forum that I have. I will create the project for you. You come and join the club and see at the end of the day if there is a question, you ask yourself that what have I done for others? You will have an answer. We will create that. And that's what the Rotary is all about. Not only within our community, but beyond. So I go and talk to them. I try to inspire them by giving 15 minutes of my talk. I said, remember when you were born. Just remember when you were born. Every one of us, when we are born, we are born like this. If you go to a maternity department and see those newly born babies, infants, our fists are clenched like this, curled up. And I say, what does that mean? I interpret it as if we are born with two packages. God sends us here with two packages in our hand. One package is our responsibility towards our family. But the other package is the responsibility towards your community, towards someone else that needs your help. You may be in a fortunate and privileged position, but that's not why you are here to just enjoy that yourself. It is for others, for those who are not so privileged or so fortunate. That package must be delivered. And I'm offering you this opportunity. Come join this club. Fulfill your passion. Deliver that package. If you don't think you have that, you may lose it, you may throw it, you may toss it. But you have the packet and you must deliver it. I do talk in the same fashion as I'm talking to you. I try to awaken their inside. Be a Rotarian. It's a club which is known to be the largest service club in the world. What else do you want? You have it right in your own city. We're looking for help so that we can all do things together and helping making our community a better place. I started going to all non-profit organizations that we have around us. And I have gone to probably at least 10 or 12 of them personally. I made calls and I made an appointment. I sat with them and I said this. I drew this, I drew this picture and I took it to them. <clears throat> I said, this has all the names of different organizations. And Rotary is right here in the middle. I said, this is where we are. You see this? We are ready to extend our arm and join with you as a partner to help you in running your own project. It helps both of us. Your project gets done because we are volunteers. We are passionate volunteers. If you have a noble work, we'll come and work. I'll send six of my members to come and work with you. But you've got to give me what project you have and agree to be my partner. So we, when we went and talked to them, they were also excited about it. We are now setting up to go to an organization called Audio Journal. Audio Journal people read newspapers, 57 newspapers they read. 
to blind people. All these blind people have a device in their hand and they have the frequency that matches with this audio journal group. And they will read it so that the blind people can listen to the newspaper, Telegram and Gazette, and all those things. I have now members going there. We have not started, we just launched this. We will go and read the newspaper for them. I said that there is a club called Kids Cafe. Steve Tankano is a business owner in our community. He is wealthy. He has everything in life that he wanted to have. And I happened to talk to him. I brought him on my radio program and uh, talk about his life. And he said, because he is now running the Kids Cafe, that's what brought me, brought him to my radio program. And he says that one day, Sacha, when I was reading a book, the book says that you may have everything for yourself, but ask yourself, that, what have you given back to the community? And I hadn't given anything back. And that just turned his life. He now feeds 250 kids three days a week. He cooks, he goes to a boys and girls club, and he feeds those kids. I went to see him and I said, Steve, I want you to increase that to 350. We will come and help you. It takes $200, $250 to buy all the ingredients and cook. I said, we'll sponsor. I will give money to Rotary as my donation and the Rotary will pay for you. Everything that I am doing, anybody is giving money, I am saying, give it to our foundation, give it to our service fund, so that we can channel your money through Rotary. There is an organization called Worcester Community Action Council. They buy 300 jackets every winter for poor kids. I personally buy 25 of them for them every year. This year I went to the executive director and I said, my contribution will be to the Rotary Club and the check will come to you from the Rotary Club. But in return, I have made a deal with each one of them. I said, look, this is a partnership. Every time I do something or my members come and do something for you, I want you to write up something on us. The Rotarians came and did this. The Red for Blind. They gave 300 or 450 jackets. They came and did this. They fed the kids and sent it to my media. I am a very strong believer of building the image, value, image, and product. Ever since I took up the job, I have been all over the media. I called Telegram and Gadget, which is our biggest news media. I went to Jordan Levy show. I said, Jordan, I want to talk to you about Rotary. Invite me. He invited me. I talked about Rotary. I called the mayor's office. I said, Mayor, Worcester Rotary Club is no different than city of Worcester. You have a mayor's forum. Can I come and talk about Rotary? Make that move. Go. Promote your club. You as a president have that right, have the chair to call and say that, I want to come and talk about Rotary. They cannot deny that. They cannot deny that. Put them in a guilty mode. I told Telegram and Gazette that, why wouldn't you write? Your job is to write about the organization which is doing well. You know how much we have done in the past 100 years for the city of Worcester? I haven't seen any write-up by you guys. I think you should take up that job and write about us. And I don't want you to write. I want to earn it. We want to do things and earn it. Telegram and Gazette came and interviewed me. Next Thursday, they're coming to our club, sending their photographers, sending their news, news uh, reporters. They have already written up an article, which is going to come out next Sunday. This Thursday, they're sending the photographers to come and take the pictures of the club, what goes on. So I have not only taken the step to motivate our own club members, but the entire community. I want to say that slowly, as I said here at the bottom, Rotary, the talk of the town, talk of the city, talk of the community. That's what I want Worcester Rotary Club to be, to come back up because of what we are. And not just because we want them to just ride upon us. I want to earn this. I want to go and do different things. I have given our board this agenda item. For you see, this is Rotary Club. This is our club. And I want to do at least three partnerships with the local members. It could be more. We are already doing with three. 
Kids Cafe, the bar, you know, the reading for the blind people, audio journal. We go to Salvation Army to feed the homeless people. Now we are going to go to the senior center and do things for the seniors. There is so much opportunity out there. Each president, I think, should talk to all these organizations and create the partnership. And now we have these new members who came in. We have a process. When we bring in the new members, our secretary gives the application to the board. Board then gives their blessings that, OK, they are approved. Then we will bring them to pin them and induct them. We are going through the Rotarian process. And then we are going to do the, all these members together. We are going to do what is called the information session. Let them know orientation session. And our chairperson, Ron Frazier, will do that, leading that particular job to let everybody know what the Rotary Club is all, what the commitment that we expect from them. Each one of them is Rotary. And I say to them that it's such a pride to be known as the Rotary. So I know it is difficult for each one of you probably to go everywhere and meet everyone. I said that we'll do three projects, and I want to do two international projects. So I went and met with some international people, those who are doing things. I had an interview with, with a uh, pastor came in from Africa, Sierra Leone. And poor people out there has really buried, they're all buried in poverty, just like Haiti. So we have now joined hands with Seven Hills Foundation in Oster. They do a lot of work internationally. And I go and talk to them that can we, as Rotarian, go together. We are going to be doing the Columbus Day Parade. Our club will be a part of the parade. And I want our senior members, I am trying to arrange a convertible so I can have Ed Hall and Roger Frost, who are such senior members, to sit in that convertible and we'll all walk on that day with our banner. People around Worcester will see us. The Worcester Rotary Club is back. And that's what we want. So at the end of the day, when I finish my term, I have an answer that, yes, we have tried at least to do something. You've got to try. But there are so much opportunities that it's not difficult, because everybody is looking for help. All these organizations are looking for help. And in return, I told them that I not only want you to write upon us when we do something for you, but I want a connection. I want each one of you to send me a representative in our club, be your member. It's $200 only. It's not a big money. You just don't have to come. Key word is let them know that you don't have to be there every week. That is a key word. Because in the past, everybody thinks that I have to be there every week, and which is really challenging for business world, for, for, for anyone. So I tell them you don't have to be there every week. You can be there twice a month, alternate weeks. That should be fine. But I want you to be the member of our club because we are partners. So each of these non-profit organizations that I went to, that I want to do projects together, they have sent their representatives. They are now our members. It's a great problem. Mayor's office of Worcester called me saying that we want to see that your 50-member drive gets fulfilled. My chief of staff will be the member of your club. City of Worcester is our member. And it's a great strength for me to go and talk to someone else that Joe Petty, the member, mayor of the city, is our member also. So once you connect with these non-profit organizations and help them because we have the pool of people who are meaning to give back to the community, taking one of their own projects, and then the last project that I have is my dream. This should be a rotary project. And I've said this to our board, it's not going to be that easy, but I have a good feeling that we can do it. And we're going to do a big, big fundraiser this year on March 12th. March 12 being the date, because that's the day our organization, Worcester Rotary Club, was founded. March 12, 1912. So we chose that, so we have a significant day to celebrate our anniversary day, and we're going to do a big fundraiser in that, with the idea of slowly build up a fund, not only for our own foundation, part of that money that we raise will go to our foundation, and part will go to such projects, and mainly we'll try to save it for a building that we'd like to build. That will know, be known as the Ooster Rotary Club Shelter Home. That we will provide for those who are in the heating system in the winter, don't have heat, where do they go? There are many people who are getting into the you know, human trafficking. They get rescued, they have no place to go. This is just the part. I laid it in front of our board. 
I mean, it's going to be some time before we can do it. But city of Worcester will have a rotary building. And I'm going to invite all presidents around us. It's not going to be just the Worcester Rotary Club, but together we can build this. If we have a tangible thing that we can touch, more people in the community will then know that the Rotary Club has done something that we can visibly see besides the projects that we do. And I don't want to say that it will be just Worcester Rotary Club if all other club joins us, just like the NICU project, Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. So many presidents came together with the lead that Worcester provided. And now we have, out of the 49 cameras they needed, we already got 40 of them. And Rotary Club has donated so many of them. So we have such good product with us. We have values within us. We have image that we have to build. That's the part we have to work. You're going to have to call every media possible. You've got to go on television. The president should take up that job without any fear. Go and talk about your club and say we're willing to really work together. And when they come and join, ask them to be the members. We have been very successful. They're all the CEOs of those uh, organizations, all executive directors of the organization. They're all professional. At the same time, we have many business owners who have come that I know. I went and talked to them. I said, you've got to be a Rotarian. How could you not be a Rotarian? Because I see within you an opportunity that you want to help others. Who doesn't want to help others? We're all born with two parents. And I remind them every time. So no matter what my club has been, from 350 to 50, no matter how much down it has gone, I believe that we have the value. And I'll give you this story at the end. It's a $100 bill. If I say, if I just say I want to give it to someone, how many of you would raise hand to take this? <laughs> Everybody, right? <laughs> Everybody would like to take this. From how many of you would still like to take this? Everybody, right? Put it on the floor right now. How many of you would still like to take this? Everybody. That's what wrote for this. No matter how much down we have gone, our values are there. That has gone down. Sell your values. Talk to people about what property is serious. We have a responsibility to let people know that you have a club in your own city, in your own town. How could you not be a part of that and make sure that you enjoy the values that we bring to humanitarian? to people all over the world. Become a VIP yourself, make your work the VIP. Your values have not gone. And when you have that club with that value, that we have ours, everyone around us will be associated with it. It will be easier. You just have to let them know what you bring for them in their life. Sometimes you have to awaken them. As a president, I think it's our responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friends, my Rotarian friends, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate it.